Welcome to the TDTV channel. Like and subscribe to support us. Starting off today's video are some noteworthy updates from the battlefield. Today, Russia's aviation information website Avia.pro reported unfavorable news related to Ukraine's counterattack in the Chervonopopovka area. During an attempt by the Ukrainian armed forces to change control over a small region, they suffered catastrophic losses. As it turned out, the Russian military was fully prepared for the Ukrainian army's attack and thus utilized their potential to strike the advancing Ukrainian forces. On the presented video footage, a counterattack by the Ukrainian army near the town of Chervonopopovka, LNR, can be seen. The footage shows that the Ukrainian forces are attempting a massive attack to occupy a defensive line, however, as a result of only a few precise strikes, the Ukrainian army lost an entire unit, the latter did not even reach the Russian army's defensive line. Avia.pro wrote, experts note that counterattacks carried out in open areas are almost always accompanied by extremely high losses, and in this case, such video footage is excellent proof of this. As of today, Thanks to the active advancement of the Russian army, the Ukrainian armed forces have managed to push back to Torsk, and on the Kupiansk direction, the fighting is already taking place just a few kilometers from the district center of the Kharkiv region. Meanwhile, reports from Ukraine indicate that in the Bakhmut area, the Ukrainian army is engaged in fierce fighting and Russia has suffered some losses. Occupiers continue to suffer significant losses in battles with Ukrainian defenders, attempting to storm prepared positions of the armed forces of Ukraine in Bakhmut. On March 17th, Special Operations Forces released new footage of the elimination of Russian aggressors. One of the units, after several days of fighting in this direction, has neutralized at least a company of the enemy and the Orlan 10 unmanned aerial vehicle. The enemy is stopped every time they attempt to move forward, the Ukrainian Special Operations Forces Telegram channel reported. In addition, the Twitter account dedicated to tracking weapons used by Ukraine in the conflict, Ukraine Weapons Tracker, has recently posted some noteworthy videos, including The Ukrainian 36th Marine Brigade took a Russian T-80 BVM tank out of action with a FGM-148 Javelin ATGM strike in Donetsk Oblast. See it now. The Ukrainian 93rd Brigade destroyed a Russian BMP-2 infantry fighting vehicle in hashtag Bogmet City using with a Stugna P ATGM strike. On March 10th, the Ukrainian 10th Mountain Assault Brigade destroyed a Russian T-72 series tank with a Stugna P ATGM strike in the vicinity of Bailohorivka, hashtag Donetsk Oblast. After being hit, the tank cooked off. A Ukrainian YPR-765 armored personnel carrier was destroyed during an attempted Ukrainian attack in the vicinity of Robotine, Zaporizhia Oblast. At least three other Ukrainian vehicles were lost as well. Two of them appear to be M113-based vehicles, but their status and type are yet to be confirmed. Members of the Russian Wagner military group have seized some of Ukraine's main battle tanks in Bakhmut. Images posted on social media show members of the Russian private military company Wagner seizing some of Ukraine's tanks in the Bakhmut area. According to the images, Wagner members discovered and seized one T-64 BV main battle tank and one T-72 AV main battle tank of Ukraine. Observers note that these tanks were damaged and Ukrainian defense forces had to abandon them before withdrawing to fortify their defenses. The T-64BV is one of the most powerful main battle tanks in the Ukrainian military. It is equipped with many modern devices such as the contact reactive armor, the upgraded main gun with integrated anti-tank missile system 9K120 reflex, the 1A45 Irtish fire control system, and the panoramic sight TKN4S. As for the T-72AV, it is a heavily modernized version of the legendary T-72 main battle tank produced by the Soviet Union. Slovakia transfers 13 MiG-29 fighter jets to Ukraine. On March 17th, the government of Slovakia approved the transfer of 13 MiG-29 fighter jets to Ukraine. Edward Heger, prime minister of the country, made a corresponding statement. The fighter jets will be transferred under the defense assistance provided by Slovakia to Ukraine. 
The additional aircraft, which Ukraine has requested since the beginning of the war, should help the Air Force of Ukraine establish control over airspace and intercept enemy targets. He wrote on Twitter, the government of Slovakia has just approved the shipment of 13 MiG-29s to Ukraine. Promises must be kept, and when President Volodymyr Zelensky asked for more weapons, including fighter jets, I said we would do our best. Glad others are doing the same. Military aid is the key to Ukraine being able to protect itself and all of Europe from Russia. As previously reported, together with Slovakia, Poland is ready to hand over MiG-29 fighter jets to the Ukrainian Air Force. Yaroslav Nad, Minister of Defense of Slovakia, announced this. He noted that he had spoken with Mariusz Blazak, head of the Polish Ministry of Defense, at the meeting of EU defense ministers on March 8 in Stockholm, and said that Warsaw would agree to a joint process of transferring MiG-29 fighter jets to Ukraine. In an interview with CNN, President of Poland Andrzej Duda confirmed his readiness to take such actions as well. He stated that Warsaw was ready to transfer its MiG-29 fighter jets to Ukraine as part of an international coalition. On March 16, Andrzej Duda announced that in the following days Poland planned to hand over the first four MiG-29 fighter jets to Ukraine and later all of its aircraft of this type. Belgium to hand over 240 trucks to the Ukrainian army. Belgium will send 240 Volvo military vehicles to Ukraine. The Belgian De Standard reports about this with reference to the statements of the Ministry of Defense of the country. The first batch of vehicles will be sent to Ukraine next week. These vehicles are reportedly intended for transporting troops and equipment. According to the publication, the Belgian army has nearly 400 Swedish-made Volvo trucks in reserve. In the Belgian army, the Volvo truck family consists of Volvo Cargo, Volvo Shelter, Volvo Fassi, and Volvo Monomat. The Ministry of Defense is convinced that the 240 vehicles to be handed over to the Ukrainian army are in good condition. Ukrainians are not handed over anything that they did not ask for and do not need, said a high-ranking Belgian military officer. Defense Minister Ludovic Dodandu says that every Ukrainian issue is explored for its impact on Belgian defense and the capabilities of defense enterprises. I confirmed on Wednesday at the meeting of the contact group on defense of Ukraine in the Ramstein 10 format that our country provided all possible assistance and would continue to do so, Ludovic Dodandu said. She noted that in addition to the delivery of trucks, 100 Belgian instructors were also on their way to train Ukrainian soldiers. The emphasis is often placed on the supply of weapons, but Ukrainian units are also very much waiting for these trucks. During the war, logistics is no less important than weapons, emphasized the Director General for Material Resources of the Ministry of Defense of Belgium. These trucks have been in service since 1992. The Army plans to phase out these vehicles and replace them with newer ones. The phase-out of vehicles has been planned for several years, but it was decided to accelerate the process. The publication said that the Belgian Army may hand over most of the trucks to the Ukrainian Army. Ukraine received ammunition for the Mars 2 MLRS. Germany handed Ukraine a new military aid package, which included ammunition for the Mars 2 MLRS. According to the federal government of Germany, Ukrainian army received 5,155mm artillery shells. In addition, 155mm precision guided ammunition, the number of which is not specified. Totally, the new aid package includes 500 pistols SFP9 2 lift trucks 4 mobile antenna mast systems 2 hangar tents 25 generators Germany is also preparing to provide Ukraine with 5,330-155 mm projectiles and missiles for the Iris-T SLM air defense system. The transfer of an unspecified number of ammunition to the German Mars 2 MLRS, which are in service with Ukraine, five units, will strengthen the position of the armed forces of Ukraine. Mars 2 is designed to destroy clusters of enemy manpower and equipment, artillery batteries, air defenses, command posts, and communications, as well as to set up the minefields through remote mining. Mars 2 MLRS is a German multiple rocket launcher adopted by the Bundeswehr in 1990. This launcher is basically a licensed copy of the American M270 MLRS with minor modifications. 
The crew of the Mars 2 rocket system, consisting of three people, the commander, driver, and gunner, it has a system of collective protection against weapons of mass destruction with a filter ventilation unit. Fire control equipment is also located in the cabin. A rotary launch platform is located behind the cabin. The artillery unit of Mars 2 consists of two disposable units, each housing six transport and launch containers with rocket-propelled ammunition. This MLRS is equipped with a new European fire control system, which allows firing GMLRS guided missiles, which are capable of hitting targets at a distance of up to 80 kilometers. Missiles manage to deliver accurate strikes due to the presence of an improved global positioning system, GPS guidance, with an antenna that is more resistant to interference. Thank you for tuning in to our video. You can click the like to support our TDTV global team and hit that subscribe button now for more great content. Thanks for your support. We'll catch you at the next one.